And a pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome to Hines Community College. Don Brooks alongside Bill Morgan as we are moments away from game three in the 4A North Half Championship in baseball this season. The Pontotoc Warriors against the Ridgeland Titans, and this is the deciding game in this three-game series as Pontotoc comes in 30-4 and four on the season and Ridgeland with a 28 and 12 record on the campaign. Ridgeland the host school here today. And of course, if you're familiar with Ridgeland, they're a relatively new school, so they uh, do not have their own facility. And that's the reason we're down here in Raymond, Mississippi at Hines Community College uh, host for today's deciding baseball game. Pontotoc, of course, looking back on this series, they won game one at Smith Wheel Stadium last Thursday by the final score of three to two, an outstanding baseball game. But Ridgeland rebounded Saturday with a seven nothing victory up in Pontotoc. And that's why we're here today as you see the two coaches meeting behind home plate to exchange lineups. And Bill, uh, we want to thank all of our sponsors, of course, for helping us uh, bring these games to you. It's good to be down here. Uh, in Raymond, Mississippi, my first trip to Hines Community College and an absolutely beautiful day for baseball. I tell you, Don, it is. We saw a little rain as we were coming into Jackson, but, you know, it's turned off to be a beautiful evening, a very warm evening here in the sun. And uh, our first trip, as you said, down here to uh, to Raymond, and uh, what a nice facility here as you take a look at the, uh, at the diamond. And looking forward to this decisive game three coming up here uh, featuring, of course, our home uh, Pontotoc Warriors coming down to make the uh, long trip down for the uh, for the ball game. Let us mention proud sponsor of this whole series, all three of these games in this series, Southern Pulmonary Care Service and Pharmacy at 316A Coffee Street. Call 489-3116 or call them toll free 1-800-585-3116. Owner Wayne Mahon, Marianne Hester, Donna Jones, and Beverly Wardlaw, all licensed resp respiratory care practitioners and are all on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week for you, their patients, offering complete instructions and training of all equipment with free delivery and setup. Mary Ann Hester, a licensed respiratory care practitioner, is the only licensed Paydorthist in Pontotoc County, Don. I hope I got that right. <laughs> Stop by and see her today for all your diabetic shoe needs. Uh, Paydorthist in Pontotoc County, the only licensed one, Mary Ann Hester. Pr we're proud to have Wayne Mahon and all of the proud folks at Southern Pulmonary Care Service and Pharmacy. Proud to be a part of the game here on Channel 13 in Pontotoc and, of course, TV7, your community TV station, Don, as we take a continue to look at the coaches on the field. What an exciting way to... In a uh, way to try to, to end this series tonight, of course, you got to win to stay alive if you're Pontotoc. You know, you, you win tonight or you go home. Absolutely. And a great crowd of Pontotoc folks making the trip down here as they chartered a uh, bus and brought a huge amount of support for these Warriors who've had just an outstanding season. They're trying to advance to the championship uh, series, which will start. Thursday night, in fact, they'll either play the winner of this series, of course, will play either Wes Jones or Brookhaven next Thursday, Saturday. And then uh, if it goes to a deciding game three, that'll be the 21st and the 22nd down here at Smith Wheel Stadium in Jackson. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First of all, for the Pontotoc Warriors, your visiting team today in their traveling black uniforms trimmed in gold. And leading off and playing left field is number two, J.J. Hester. Batting second, the shortstop, number 22, Caleb Kitt. Hitting third, the first baseman, number 15, Tyler Hodge. Batting fourth for the Warriors, number 25, the catcher, Hayes Gregory. Batting sixth, the center fielder, number 21, Jacob Kidd. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, number 27, Nathan Hamilton. Batting seventh and on the mound today for the Warriors, number 14, Josh Robinson. Batting eighth, the third baseman wearing number 19, Tyler Holt. In right field, the seven, no, number 17, batting ninth, is Kerry Walker. Defensively for Ridgeland, the Titans, in left field will be Jay Roberts. Derek Holmes over in center field. Blake Hitchcock is in right. Over at third base, Daniel Nelson. The shortstop is Brandon Walls. The second baseman, Jason Salter. Over at first pitch is just first base is Justin Smith. Behind the plate is Edward Joe. And on the mound today, 
is number 22, Tyler Williams. Williams drawing a start here for the Titans today. And uh, for those of you who might not be familiar, Ridgeland has been able to ride the right arm of one of the top pitchers in the state, and Justin Smith, who's playing first today. And he was the guy that shut out the Pontotoc Warriors on Saturday by the final score, seven to nothing, a Delta State signee. And from all accounts, he was pretty impressive Saturday in that ball game. But Pontotoc has to feel pretty confident coming into this game. They were able to come down here last Thursday night and uh, win that game on the road three to two. So they've been a pretty good road team this year. Absolutely, I tell you what, Don, we just saw the shirt 12 and 0 in division. So the Warriors really making a statement this year going undefeated in division play and uh, trying to keep their season alive here as they try to get to a state uh, championship series with a victory here tonight. So nonetheless, it'll be a tough victory uh, coming against a very good Ridgeland team as, as we look forward to seeing these two teams meet here tonight. You know, they earned a one run victory here the other night and uh, then Ridgeland came to town and just uh, won decisively at Pontotoc. So Pontotoc will try, will try to return the favor here tonight. Well, let's take a break as the, uh, we're waiting for first pitch here from Hines Community College. And we'll be back with the first pitch from Pontotoc and Ridgeland right after this. Tonight, Mr. Billy Bowdy, Director of Missions of Warren Yazoo County Association, will offer the prayer and remain standing for the national anthem. Let's pray together. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this day that you've given us and all the beauty in it. Thank you for your love for everyone here. We pray that you would bless the administration and faculty of both Pontotoc and Ridgeland High Schools. As these young men play this game, may they play free from injury and with good sportsmanship. Bless the spectators as well that are here today. May you give them safe travel home later this evening. We pray that you'll be honored with what we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. your national anthem here and we are ready to get this one underway the titans have already taken the field as their starting pitcher tyler williams taking his warm-up tosses the big right-hander getting ready to go to the hill for the titans who are wearing their home carolina blue uniforms and we are ready As Don said, we're just about ready to get things underway here as Pontotoc will be at bat offensively to begin things against Ridgeland as a capacity crowd out on hand for both these clubs here today. As you can see, the bleachers absolutely packed and the chartered buses parked just down below us that carried the Pontotoc uh, fans as well as the team. And they made their way down south here in the central part of Mississippi. As we get said, as we were just talking about, a, Great game coming up as the weather is absolutely gorgeous. Very warm, unlike the other night when we were kind of cool. It's going to be a great night here for baseball and what should be done a very exciting game three. Well, it doesn't get any better than this because this is do or die right here tonight. You either you win, you move on to the state championship, what all these guys dream of when you play baseball coming up and, and you lose your season's over. So this is the deciding game. 
game three, the rubber match between these two teams. We saw, uh, you and I saw Panatakta uh, play a game in a similar circumstance last Monday night against Itawamba, and they jumped out to a big early inning offensive explosion and went on to win eight to two over Itawamba. And uh, they will have to do the same, pretty much the same here tonight against a good Ridgeland team. You know, this is a Ridgeland team that Bill that wasn't ranked very high in the polls, but they have been able to win their way through the playoffs and have gotten to this point. In fact, they beat Oxford, a team Pontotoc's very familiar with, in the second round to get to this um, third round series against the Warriors. And so the, the Warriors, of course, come in ranked number seven in the last poll that came out in the state. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, Ridgeland uh, came together when they had to, and, you know, playoff teams make it by getting better in the playoffs. That's exactly what they've done in that win against Oxford. J.J. Hester will lead it off. The right-handed hitter stands in, and the first pitch is going to be swung on. Fly ball, left center field. It's going to be playable, and it's going to be caught out there by the center fielder as they collided. And a nice catch out there by Derek Holmes, and Holmes collided with his teammate that time, left fielder Jay Roberts. And the out is recorded, though, so one pitch, one out here in the top half of the first inning. And that'll bring up the shortstop, Caleb Kidd. Kidd stands in from the right side. Williams ready, kicks and delivers, and he popped it up, foul out of play up over the press box, 0-1 the count. So Williams comes out throwing strikes here in the early going. First two, he's throwing it over the plate. Here's the pitch to Kidd. It's breaking ball in for strike two. No balls and two strikes to count to the shortstop for the Warriors, Caleb Kidd. Kidd, who uh, got his first loss of the season Saturday. He was 11-0 going in that game and lost 7-0 originally. Check swing. Did he go? They appeal. And they say, yes, he did. Mm. So... Kid strikes out on a check swing, and that is the second out of the inning. So two quick outs here in the top half of the first inning, and it'll bring up Tyler Hodge. Hodge, the first baseman, will bat here with two down and nobody on. And the pitch, curveball in there for strike. Oh, and one to count to Hodge. Hodges 0 for 6 in the series. He has struggled in that number three hole. Here's the pitch. Popped it up, foul off to the right and out of play. It'll be no balls and two strikes to count here to Hodge. Gregory would be next if Hodge can get aboard, but he's in the hole 0 and 2, and you gotta be impressed with the way Williams has come out early here, Bill, and thrown strikes right away. He's gone right after the hitters. Oh yeah, he's come out really strong with some confidence here, and then Tell you what, really gotten ahead of the Pontotoc batters. 0-2 pitch to Hodge. Outside and low for ball one. One ball, two strikes. A lot of Pontotoc students here today. I guess they let out school at lunch, probably. There's a curveball in the dirt for ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, you can bet classes were cut short today, probably to the liking of these students down here. And also probably to the ones that aren't baseball fans. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They get out of school early. Here's the 2-2 pitch. And it is strike three called. He struck him out. And that ends the inning. So Pontotoc comes up empty in the top half of the first inning. One, two, three. Two strikeouts in the inning for Tyler Williams. And we played a half inning as Pontotoc nothing and Ridgeland coming to bat. Let's take a look now between innings at the starting lineup for the Titans. And leading off and playing center field is number 32, Derek Holmes. We already mentioned his name. And he caught that first fly ball off the bat of Hester. Batting second is the catcher, Edward Joe. Batting third, the pitcher, number 22, Tyler Williams. He's the top hitter on the Titans as well. Jay Roberts is the left fielder, batting cleanup and wearing number 17. Batting fifth is the designated hitter, Shelby Robertson. 
Hitting sixth, the right fielder, number four, Blake Hitchcock. Batting seventh, the shortstop, number 20, Brandon Walls. Hitting eighth, the second baseman, wearing number eight, Jason Salters. And the number nine hitter, number 12, the third baseman, Daniel Nelson. And pitching today for the Warriors is Josh Robinson. Four and three on the year. And pitched in the first game, I believe, in this series. And struck out six and walked four, allowing only four hits. So he had a good outing in the first game. He also plays shortstop for the Warriors as well. So with him pitching, that moves Caleb Kidd, who pitches a lot for the Warriors. He'll play shortstop. And everything else is pretty much the same across the defensive alignment for Pontotoc. In left field is J.J. Hester. Over in center is Jacob Kidd. The right fielder is Kerry Walker. Down at third is Tyler Holt. The shortstop, as we mentioned, Caleb Kidd. Adam Peoples down at second base. At first base is Tyler Hodge. Behind the plate is Hayes Gregory. And as we said, on the mound, the right-hander, Josh Robinson. As we get set for the bottom of the first inning, Derek Holmes will lead it off. And the first pitch is high for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Holmes is just one for seven in the series. Here's the 1-0 pitch coming from Hodge. It's high ball two. Two balls and a strike, and Holmes will probably take one here to try to get aboard any way he can. He'll probably have the red light here on 2-0. Defense is straight away for Holmes, and the pitch. No, he swung, popped it up, shallow center field. That's going to be trouble. Nice play out there by Adams Peoples. Peoples with a nice over-the-shoulder catch in shallow center for the first out of the inning. Good, uh, good eyes there by people still unable to, to really make a, what could have been a, uh, which was a difficult catch and able to come down with it and get the first out of the inning. So a good job there defensively for Pontotoc. Here's the catcher, Edward Joe. Joe is two for four on the series. So he's having a decent series. That's a curve ball, a little bit high for ball one. One ball and no strike to Joe. And the pitch just missed the outside corner. Two balls and no strikes. So Robinson has fallen behind the first two hitters. Well, they gave Holmes a green light on 2-0, and oh, so they might give Joe the same. But it's inside and low for ball three. And now you'll probably take for sure three balls and no strikes. 315 down the lines here at Hines Community College. 385 in the gaps as that's a strike. And it's three balls and a strike to count. Straight away center, I don't see any measurements, but I'm assuming it's probably about 400 out there. There's a ground ball to third. Nice hop for the third baseman, long throw, he got it. So Tyler Holt makes the play five to three on the put out. There's two away now here in the bottom of the first. And it'll bring up the pitcher, Tyler Williams. Williams has had a good series, Bill. Four out of seven with two homers, four RBIs. Yeah, you can't argue with those, those stats. First pitch is a curve ball, low and away, ball one. Williams, the top hitter on the Titans team. Also, he's pitching today, so he's going to be very important to their chances to end advancing. There's a pop-up, high fly ball center field. Caleb Kidd's got a beat on it. And, or excuse me, Jacob Kidd. And Jacob puts it away to end the inning. And so both teams go one, two, three in the first inning, and we played one, a quick inning here at Hines Community College, and it's Warrior zero, Titan zero. We'll take a break and come back with the top of the second right after this. Just a second. Welcome back, everyone. Want to thank all of you back in the Pontotoc area for joining us. If you didn't get a chance to come down, um, we're glad to be bringing you this action here on tape delay today. 
Top of the second inning, four, five, and six hitters for Pontotoc. First pitch is a slow curve strike in there to Hayes Gregory. Gregory has had a good series, three for seven, and he is the top RBI man and home run man on the Warriors. Another curve ball, strike two. Mm. Tyler Williams right now is pitching with some confidence. He's throwing strikes, and that's what you like if you're a coach. Getting the ball over the plate, mixing it up, and 0-2 here on Gregory. Hayes needs to just try to put it in play, and he takes it high for a ball. Shorten your stroke here with two strikes to try to get a base hit. One ball and two strikes to count on Gregory. He's the Pontotoc catcher. Check this swing, it's low two. Two balls and two strikes. Two-two count here to Gregory. Jacob Kidd on deck. Slow curve, struck him out, looking. Mm. Breaking ball that came across the knees, and that was an outstanding pitch out of Williams. And nothing Gregory could do but look at it, and that is three straight strikeouts now for Williams. And now the batter is Jacob Kidd, the center fielder. Well, Williams doing everything you would want your, your pitcher to do here to start the game, and three straight strikeouts. Great job there by Williams. Kidd, the left-handed hitter, stands in against Williams. First pitch is fouled straight back right over our heads. And that's going to go off the roof and skip out in the road. And roll right under a SUV the, there. Uh, now field. I know why we parked across the street <laughs> on the other side. Absolutely. <laughs> you learn that coming to baseball games. 0-1 oh, to count here on Jacob Kidd. Here's the pitch. Foul back off to the left, and it's 0-2 oh, now. And mm. Williams constantly getting ahead yeah. of the hitters doing a good job yeah. of he's been that way since you know since the start of the game he has gotten ahead with those early strikes that he's throwing done and uh, really you know that has to give him confidence as this game progresses absolutely you can do a lot of things with 0-2 he really puts the batter in a hole he has to protect the plate here does kid no balls and two strikes tyler williams ready the pitch ground ball slowly hit to short he'll scoop throw it across the diamond in time for the out Walls takes care of Kidd, two down. You score that one six to three. And there's two outs here in the top of the second for Nathan Hamilton. Well, at this pace, we may be out of here pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, look, it could be a low scoring affair here. Hamilton, the DH, one for seven in the series thus far. Of course, a lot of those Pontoc averages fell down after that game Saturday when Smith was able to shut out the Warriors. They have had such a great hitting year that that was rare to see them get shut out. In fact, I think that's probably the first time this year. I don't know all the scores of their four well, losses, but I know the, the, three, the three, I believe, at least they got on the board. I tell you, you can give a lot of credit to Smith. They haven't, you know, Pontotoc hasn't faced too many pitchers of that caliber this year. Two balls and no strikes here on Hamilton. He's got the advantage here. And the pitch. Curveball's in there for a strike, and it's two and one. Williams is what has made him so effective in these first five-plus batters is able to change speeds, mitts up his curveball, fastball. 2-1 pitch here to Hamilton. Slow grounder off the end of the bat's going to go foul. Down the first baseline is two balls and two strikes now to the Warrior DH, Nathan Hamilton. First five have been retired by Williams. Robinson also retired the Titans, one, two, three in the bottom of the first. Neither team has had a base runner thus far. Two, two with two outs and the pitch coming. In the dirt for ball three, so a full count now to Hamilton. Nice patience that time by Nathan to uh, not swing at that one and get a full count here. Payoff pitch coming here from Williams. Slow grounder right back to Williams. That should end the inning, and it does. And so the Warriors go in order for the second straight inning. And we have played one and a half here from 
Hines Community College. No score between the Warriors and the Ridgeland Titans. Don, let us mention Southern Pulmonary Care Service and Pharmacy at 316 A Coffee Street in Punatock, a proud sponsor of the game. Owner Wayne Mahon, Marion Hester, Donna Jones, Beverly Wardlaw, all licensed respiratory care practitioners and are all on call 24 hours seven days a week for your for, for their patients offering complete instructions and training of all equipment free delivery and setup marianne hester a licensed respiratory care practitioner is the only licensed podorthist in Pontotoc county stop by and see her today for all of your diabetic shoe needs of course i'll let you know she's related a little bit to jj hester so proud she, to, proud to have keeping an eye on you too that's exactly right she's sitting over here to our left so she's watching us real close but we're proud <laughs> to have Wayne Mahon and all the staff of Southern Pulmonary Care Service and Pharmacy sponsoring this ball game on your local sports connection. And uh, you can see the excitement of these Pontotoc fans as they're holding up their signs, trying to get something going here for their team offensively. Now we need to tell them that the, the TV's this way. You That's know, right. You want to get that sign on TV. That's right. <laughs> uh, we haven't got to the point of having a center field camera just yet. Right, right. Maybe we future. can get Adam Gore up in a crane out there. One oh, of these they days. must have heard you, Don. <laughs> All right. Bottom of the second inning coming up, and Ridgeland will have the four, five, and six hitters due up. It'll be Jay Roberts, the left fielder, leading it off here against Josh Robinson. First pitch is going to be low for ball one. One ball, no strikes. And the pitch. Look like a changeup in there for a strike. Good off-speed pitch by Robinson. One ball to one strike to count. The 1-1 one, one offering. That was high ball two. Two balls and a strike now to Roberts. Roberts, Robertson, and Hitchcock. The three batters due up. Roberts is 0 for 6 in this series. He has struggled in that number four hole, the cleanup spot in the lineup. 2-1 pitch from Robinson. Another curveball is high. Three and one. Well, if you're Roberts, you have to think fastball right here on the 3-1 count because you know Robinson does not want to put the leadoff man aboard. Here's the 3-1 pitch. And that's a nice curveball for strike. Well, Roberts was indeed thinking fastball, and he got the curve. He took it, and the count goes full now. Three balls and two strikes. And the payoff pitch hit him oh, in the left arm, and that'll put him on with a hit batter. So that's the first base runner of the game for either team, and it brings up the DH, Shelby Robertson. Well, it would have been ball four anyway had it not hit him. It was going to be inside, so nevertheless, they would have had a base runner aboard with the Titans. Here's Robertson. He looks to bunt, pops it up foul off the screen, and it's 0-1. Well, Coach Dowdy, you know he knows how much of a pitching duel this might be. He's trying to get that runner to second and get the lead here, knowing that the runs may be scarce in this ball game tonight. 0-1 the count on Robertson. He squares again and gets the butt down. It's a good one. And Robinson's got to hurry. He does nice play to get the out. And that'll be a sacrifice for Robertson. Advancing the runner to second with only one out. And now Blake Hitchcock will be the batter for the Titans with a runner in scoring position now. Base hit could give the Titans the lead here in the second inning. Hitchcock 0 for 5, though, in the series. Robinson will go out of the stretch now. With the runner at second, and the first pitch is a breaking ball low, ball one. One ball and no strikes. The 1-0 pitch, fouled it straight back, the count evens one and one.
One ball, one strike to Blake Hitchcock. Brennan Walls will be next for the Titans. Bottom of the second inning, no score. Neither team has gotten a hit so far. Ridgeland got their first base runner on a hit batter. Ground ball foul up along third. The count goes to one and two. So Robinson gets ahead in the count now. Smithville Stadium uh, occupied tonight, so they moved this game down to Hines. That's strike three called. He took it right down the middle at the kneecaps. And that's the first strikeout of the game for Josh Robinson. And there are now two outs, and the batter will be Brandon Walls. Walls is two for seven in this series. Popped it up right side. That's going to reach the Ridgeland students that are lined up along the fence down the right field line for strike one. A lot of the fans brought their long chairs as always and lined up and down the left and right field lines. No balls and a strike here on Brandon Walls with a runner at second, two men out. Bottom half of the second inning. The pitch high for ball one on a curveball, one ball and one strike. One and one to Brandon Walls. Robinson ready, the pitch. And that is going to drop in for strike two. Another good breaking ball out of Robinson, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Both of these pitchers doing an outstanding job on the most part of staying ahead in the count. One, two pitch to Walls. Ground ball into the hole. That's going to be a base hit. Hester comes up throwing. He bobbled it. They held the runner up, and I don't know why. He could have made it, Don. He would have made it. Yeah, absolutely. He made it. Two outs. He didn't know it. And I don't think that was a good decision by no. the third base coach. Of course, you can't anticipate that Hester's going to bobble the ball, but right. still, with two outs, you got to send him. Yeah, he, he he had the advantage, no doubt about it. Especially with the number eight hitter coming up. Just a little hesitation there, and it, he stayed on third. So that's the first hit of the ball game for Walls, or for Ridgeland. And, and here comes Jason Salters, the second baseman, left-handed hitter, stands in against Robinson. Runners at the corners with two outs. First pitch is a strike. Looked like the ball may have hit that little lip between the dirt and the outfield, caused a little hop that Hester wasn't able to glove it cleanly. And fortunately for the Warriors, third base coach held the runner up. There's a little cue job off to the left for strike two. No balls and two strikes. And now Robinson's one pitch away from getting out of this inning. Yeah, big play coming up for Robinson. He'd love to get out and get that third out right here. No balls, two strikes on Jason Salter. Salter's two for six in this series. There goes the runner. He stole, he's caught in a rundown now. And there's a throw down to second. He's still in a rundown. And now the runner at third is going to try to score. Here's the throw to the plate. He is out of there. Got it. Hayes Gregory got run over at the plate, but he held on to the ball. And the coach Phil Webb is going to come out and argue. The fact that he ran over the catcher, and I don't <laughs> think you can do that in high school sports, evidently. And he may issue a warning or may even throw the guy out of the game. I'm not sure. He's out of there, yeah. He ejected him, I believe. He's out. So Jay Roberts, the cleanup hitter, has been ejected from the game. That's huge if you're a Warrior fan because the number four hitter is done for the day. And so now number two will check in for Ridgeland in left field. 
That is Wade Holloman. And Hol Holloman will check in to replace Roberts, who ejected for running over the catcher. If you're Pete Rose, you can do that, but not in high school <laughs> sports. I tell you, tough blow there for Ridgeland to lose him this early in the game, especially done, and uh, what a momentum change on one play for Pontotoc. So the inning comes to an end as they tried to pull a double steal to get that run home and not showing a whole lot of confidence in the hitter by doing that. Trying to steal a worm, but Pontotoc played it exactly like you should have by running the getting the runner in a rundown and then making him commit to going home. And when he did so, they made a nice throw to the plate and well, gets, get out of the inning with no damage just, done. Just great defense by Pontotoc, great awareness of where you know the runners were, trying to do a double steal, as you said, and the Warriors absolutely snuffing it out and able to get the third out. And, that's what one reason, you know, they're, they're where they are today and why they're still playing great defensive play. And now the umpire is going to come over and he's got something to say to one of the fans. Uh, I don't know. I, I think the umpire needs to avoid what the fans say. I don't I don't agree with going over and saying something to the fans, but well, maybe trying to even it up a little, you think? <laughs> Anyway, we go to the third inning, still no score. And Pontotoc comes out in good shape with the cleanup hitter gone for Ridgeland for the day, having been ejected for running over Hayes Gregory. And now we go to the top of the third inning. So a lot of excitement between and, innings there, Bill. And if you're Ridgeland, you got to just forget about it and go on because a lot of ball game left here. Josh Robinson is the hitter, and he swings and misses for strike one. And I just felt a raindrop here at Hines Community College. Yep. We went from hot sunshine to some cool rain in a matter of minutes. No balls and a strike here on Robinson, and that pitch is going to be just high, ball one. One ball and one strike. Well, you look up at the sky, and it's blue, but. Oh, yeah, I know it. Just a little thundercloud overhead. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch, and that's going to miss for ball two. Two balls and a strike. Josh Robinson, Tyler Holt, Kerry Walker. Your three batters due up for the Warriors. Robinson one for five in the series. And he fouls that one back to the screen. The count goes to one and two. One ball and two strikes on Josh Robinson, the Warrior catcher here, or pitcher here today, who's done a good job through two innings of work. Only base runner we've had is and one hit and one base, one hit by a pitch for Ridgeland. And there's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. And Tyler Williams now has strike, struck out four of the first seven hitters he's faced. And the batter will be third baseman Tyler Holt. Williams has really done an excellent job because Pontotoc has not been able to, to get anything going offensively at the bats. Williams really playing well here. Holtz also one for five in the series. He takes the first pitch, and that's ball one. One ball, no strikes. The 1 0 is outside ball two. Holtz ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. Holt, the left handed hitter here, against the right handed pitcher. And the 2-0 pitch is a slow curve for strike one. Got him swinging there. Two balls and a strike. Kerry Walker in the on-deck circle for the Warriors. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Slow ground ball, gonna go foul up along the first baseline. The count evens, two balls, two strikes. Two pitch coming up here to Tyler Holt. Here it comes from Williams. Struck him out swinging. Mm. Five strikeouts now in the first eight hitters for Williams. He has looked impressive. And the batter will be Kerry Walker. 
Walker's one for five in the series as well. In fact, nobody in the starting lineup for Pontotoc has more than one hit in this series other than Gregory, who has three. Well, as we said, you know, Williams has been so ahead the whole game, he's been able to have options, you know, when it comes down to that last, that strikeout pitch. And uh, he's had that option here early in this game. Falls behind here, however. One ball, no strikes. The count on Kerry Walker. And a line shot down the third base line. That's fair. It's going to go into the corner. Walker should have at least two. And he will trot in the second with a stand-up double. Walker turned on that pitch and just barely got it inside the line down the left field line. And the left field line is not painted with the chalk, so it's got a difficult to tell. Now it, was, it looked like it was painted, but they did not chalk it today for today's game. And so that barely was fair. But a double for Kerry Walker. And now back to the top of the order and J.J. Hester. Hester flew out to center his first time up. He takes the curveball for ball one. Warriors could use a big hit here out of Hester, who had a huge game last time we saw him in that three-hit performance against Itawamba. He was our co-player of the game along with Caleb Kitt. That pitch low and away in the dirt for ball two. Two balls and no strikes here on Hester. He should get a good pitch to hit right here. Well, you want Walker where he is. You want him, at, you want him swinging with a guy on second because you know he's got the capabilities. Walker takes the lead off second. The 2-0 to Hester. Swings and misses mm. that old slow curve down low. And the count goes to two balls and a strike. And that curveball is low ball three. Mm. And the Hogs are passing by oh, yeah. behind us, and we don't mean Arkansas. We got the <laughs> motorcycle gang coming by here. Load of them. <laughs> Big pitch coming here, Don. Three-one pitch on Hester. Williams to the stretch, the pitch. Line shot, left field, base hit. Here comes Walker. He rounds third, he will score. And a big RBI single by J.J. Hester. And the Warriors take a one to nothing lead here in the top of the third inning on an RBI single by J.J. Hester. Well, we knew J.J. Hester knows how to get on base and what a great time to make contact done and bring the run in, put Pontotoc up by score of one to nothing. So back-to-back -back base hits, a double by Kerry Walker, followed by an RBI single out of Hester, and now Caleb Kidd will bat. And we know Hester has good speed from football, so he may be in a situation here where he might want to try to steal a base and get in scoring position for Kidd. Because you really, with a field that's pretty good size such as this one, you don't want to wait around on the home run. Let's see what Coach Webb decides to do here. First pitch is going to be in the dirt outside for ball one. Blocked up nicely, though, by Joe. One ball and no strikes on Caleb Kidd. He struck out his first time up on a check swing. Here's the pitch, and that's low ball two. And the scoreboard must have uh, gone out. They haven't changed. Now they got it. There we go. They're catching up now. Two balls and no strikes. The count here on Caleb Kidd. Hester leads off first. And the pitch is ball three. And Williams showing his first sign of trouble here today. After he might have got rattled a little too hard hits. Off the bats of Walker and Hester. And now Kidd, three and oh, will probably take one here. And he does, and it's a strike right down the middle. Three balls and a strike to count on Caleb Kidd. Well, you know Kidd's swinging right here, three and one. Throw it in the dirt. Throw it in the dirt. Throw it in the dirt. 
Here's the pitch. Mm. And strike two. Got a strike across the letters that time, and it's full now, kid. So Hester will be off and running with the pitch. So a ball in the gap here. There's a big gap in right center. The left fielder, or center fielder, is way over in left center field. So if he could hit one in the right center, he could run forever. But it's ball four in the dirt. And now Tyler Hodge with an RBI opportunity here with the runners at first and second. Two outs as three straight base runners now for the Warriors. And Hodge will bat. He struck out his first time up. Be a nice time for a long ball right here. Oh, yeah. Williams delivers. Curve ball is a strike on the outside corner. No balls and a strike here on Tyler Hodge. As you said, Don, a big gap in right field. <laughs> oh, it's huge. Huge gap. Holmes, the left center, center fielder, is way over in left center. If you could just mm. place one right over the second baseman's head, you could run for a while. Oh, yeah. Especially in a big ball field like this. One and one to count here on Hodge. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss on an off-speed pitch, and it's one and two now on Hodge. Here's the one-two pitch. Little ground ball foul. And the count remains one and two on Tyler Hodge. Pontot trying to advance to the state title series, which would start Thursday. And I believe that game will be at the south location, if I'm not mistaken. That pitch is in the dirt for ball two. Two balls and two strikes. West Jones taking on Brookhaven down in the south region. They are also tied one and one and are playing the deciding game tonight as well. I want to mention, too, uh, for those of you watching back in Pontotoc, the North Pontotoc Vikings in action tonight as well at home against Cleveland up in Ecru. They're trying to keep their season alive down 1-0 in that series. Win tonight, and they would go back to Cleveland for the deciding game later on in the week. 2-2 Two -two count here to Hodge. Williams looks back at Hester, and time is called, and so the pitch doesn't count and remain two and two. Mm. Two balls and two strikes here on Tyler Hodge. First and second, two down. One run already in for the Warriors. Little fly ball right field, but it's right at him, and that'll end the inning. Well, if he could have got that about 20, 30 feet to the left, yeah. he would have had a, probably a triple. But the inning comes to a close as Hodge flies out to right, and that retires the side. But a good inning for the Warriors. They pick up one run on two hits. Two men left, no errors by Ridgeland. And after three and a half now, it's the Warriors one and the Titans nothing. And due up for the Titans in this inning will be Salters, Nelson, and Holmes coming up here for Ridgeland. We'll take you to a break. You're watching Warrior, ba Warrior Baseball, and we'll be back in just a moment. Start, ain't it? Hang on. Umpire's got to discuss something here. Oh, wait. Stand by. Bottom of the third inning upcoming here. Don Brooks along with Bill Morgan as Warriors in the game three of the best of three series. Tied one to one at this point and leading one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the third inning. And due up here will be Jason Salters. Salters was at the plate when Ridgeland tried to pull the double steal back in the second inning. And now we're having some more discussions. Coach <laughs> Webb wants to come out and talk to the home plate umpire. We've had more uh, meetings between the umpires and the coaches in these first two and a half innings than, than normal, that's for sure. I don't know what they're hmm. discussing. I can't imagine. We can't relay it. And we know the last, only knew. last inning was about Roberts running over the catcher, but I don't know what that's about. 
We're ready now for the third inning. First pitch is low for a strike. Caught the knees. No balls and one strike here on Jason Salters, the Titans' second baseman. Here's the pitch. And that one's going to be low. Oh, no, he called it a strike. 0-2, mm. he's gotten a low strike zone here today. 0-2 the pitch. And off the end of the bat, a little floater to the second baseman, people. One down. That'll bring up Daniel Nelson, number nine hitter. Number 12, who plays third base for the Titans. And the pitcher curve ball is in there for strike one. Robinson doing a good job of throwing strikes, and that's what you want to do, especially with the lead. And the pitch is in the dirt. Mm. One ball, one strike the count here on Daniel Nelson. Back to the top of the order here in a moment, and Derek Holmes will bat next. He's in the on-deck circle for Ridgeland. Ridgeland's a new school that broke away from Madison Central a few years ago and formed an old school as a pop-up down the first baseline. Should be playable, and it is. Hodge goes over, makes the catch for Punatot, and two up and two down here in the bottom of the third. So back to the top of the order, and Derek Holmes. Holmes popped out to the second baseman. Peoples back in the first. He's 0 for 1. Right now, Reds and Don a little bit slow with the bats, so uh, Punatot kind of having their way here in this, right now. First pitch, slow ground ball to short, charging his kid. He's going to pump and throw, and got him. Kid with a nice play at short, or easy one, two, three inning for Josh Robinson as the Titans go in order in the third. So we played three complete here. And after three, no runs, no hits, no errors in the inning for the Titans. It's Pontotoc one, Ridgeland nothing. We'll take a break and come right back as you see the Warriors meeting down the third baseline. Stay with us. Yeah, she won the other day. Right. Hang on. We head to the top of the fourth inning here from Hines Community College, one nothing Warriors as we go to the top of the fourth. And the first pitch to Hayes Gregory is over but low for ball one. Gregory, Jacob Kidd, and Nathan Hamilton do up for the Warriors here in the top of the fourth inning. Here's the 1-0 count and a foul at the plate. The count evens 1-1. One one. Gregory struck out his first time up. He was the third straight strikeout at that time for Tyler Rims. But the second time around, Pontotoc has been able to handle Williams a little bit better. They were able to put two hits together in the third to take the lead, 1-0. Here's the 1-1 pitch, a little check swing, and they appealed to first. He didn't go. Two balls and a strike. Here's the 2-1 pitch. That's going to be a strike on the outside corner, and Gregory did not agree. And it looked like it might have been a little outside from this vantage point, but two balls and two strikes to count on Gregory. Gregory was called out on the third strike back in the second. He's got a swing here. And he took it for strike three, a breaking ball at the knees. And that one buckled Hayes Gregory. And he strikes out for the second time tonight. And there's one away here in the top of the fourth for Jacob Kidd. Kidd grounded out to short his first time up, 0 for 1. Here's the pitch. Way out in front was Kidd, and he swung right through it. No balls and a strike. Here's the 0-1. That's outside for ball one. One ball, one strike. Here's the 1-1 pitch. High fly ball right field should be playable. 
And coming in to his right a couple of steps to make the catch is Blake Hitchcock. And they're two up, two down here in the top of the fourth. Hey. Nathan Hamilton will be the batter. He grounded back to the pitcher his first time up. He is 0 for 1 on the day. One run, two hits, no errors for the Warriors, no runs, one hit, and no errors for the Titans here through three plus innings. We're in the top of the fourth. Hamilton ready. Ground ball hit sharply to short, scooped up over there. The throw to first is going to be in time, and the Warriors go down in order here in the top of the fourth. Another quick inning as Tyler Williams comes back to retire the Warriors. One, two, three in the fourth, no runs, no hits and no errors, and we head to the bottom of the fourth inning with your score still, the Warriors one and the Titans zero. Done, as you take a look, just a huge crowd here as Pontotoc, no matter what sport, always brings, brings the crowd in by the bus loads as we're excited about seeing the crowd here today down here in Jackson, and we're, we're proud to have Southern Pulmonary Care Service and Pharmacy on Coffee Street, 1-800-585-3116. Owner Wayne Mahon, Marianne Hester, Donna Jones, and Beverly Wardlaw, all licensed respiratory care practitioners, and are all on call 24-7 for your convenience. Offering complete instructions and training of all equipment with free delivery and setup. Marianne Hester, a licensed respiratory care practitioner, is the only licensed podorthist in Pontotoc County. Stop by and see her today for all your diabetic shoe needs. Specializes in diabetic supplies, providing their customers with a comprehensive range of products for one for type 1 insulin-dependent diabetics and type 2 non-insulin-dependent diabetics. They're devoted and dedicated to the allied health practice of respiratory therapy. It is their firm belief that patients requiring oxygen a respiratory treatment devices deserves ongoing in services on pulmonary rehabilitation and proper treatment procedure. They guarantee personal and professional care. When you breathe easier, we breathe easier. Southern Pulmonary Care Service and Pharmacy Coffee Street in, Pon in Pontotoc, proud to sponsor the ball game. And Don, I'm glad I got all that written down on paper. How would you like to memorize that? <laughs> oh, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's head to the bottom of the fourth now and Number two hitter Edward Joe leads it off here for Ridgeland. And the first pitch is going to be called ball one. One ball, no strikes. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball in at the knees for strike one. The count evens one and one. Joe the catcher, he grounded out to third his first time up. 0 for 1 on the day. 1-1 one, one pitch from Robinson. Slow curve, strike two, and Robinson continues to throw strikes. He has been very effective today. One, two pitch. Just inside for ball one. A ball two, excuse me, two balls and two strikes. Mm. Robinson, I think he thought that one might have caught the corner. Taking a little bit of time in between pitches here. Here's a two, two pitch to Joe. Ground ball hit up the middle. Diving effort there by Kidd, and he throws him out. Wow. Mm. Great play down there by Kidd. Caleb Kidd diving to his left to come up with a ground ball and then jump up and throw him out. Well, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't get any prettier than that, Don. Caleb Kidd, we talked about how important he is at that shortstop position, and what a play he made that time. And <laughs> boy, it doesn't get better than that on any level. Looking like Ozzie Smith down there. <laughs> One down, and the batter will be Tyler Williams, and he takes a strike, 0-1. Williams flied out to center in the first inning, 0-1 on the day. Just one hit so far off of Robinson. Popped that one up way up in the air, but it's going to be out of play over the Ridgeland dugout. In fact, it lands right on top of the Titan dugout, and the count is 0-2 now on Tyler Williams. Well, the sprinkles did not last long, thankfully. Oh, yes. Sun we, has popped back out. We had no umbrella. I'm very thankful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's a breaking ball. Struck him out right looking. Here. And the inning, or two down now, and the batter will be Wade Holeman. Second strikeout for Robinson in the game, and now Holeman will bat for the first time today. And Holman, who came in after Roberts was ejected for running over Gregory, 
So he'll bat for the first time in tonight's game. And he takes it outside, ball one. Here's the pitch. Inside, ball two. Two and oh, the count here on Holman. Robinson out of the wind up, the 2-0 pitch is low ball three. Holman is not a guy you want to walk because he did not start. He's batting the cleanup spot, but he came in for Roberts after he was ejected back in the second. And now he's gonna take all the way and it's a strike, three and one. Robinson working in a hurry and he walked him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Missed it away, and that's the second walk issued. Or excuse me, the first walk by Robinson. And the batter will be Shelby Robertson. Robertson sacrificed his first time up, so no official at bat here for Shelby Robertson. He's the DH today for Coach Dowdy's Titans. And now Robinson will have to go out of the stretch with a runner at first. So a big hole on the right side of the infield here as Hodge is holding the runner on. And the pitch is a breaking ball strike. Anybody who follows baseball on a regular basis knows if you can throw the curveball for a strike, you're gonna be effective. And he's been able to do that today, and that ball is fouled Whoa. straight back. <laughs> that was close, he got close, Doug. That one did make it over the screen. And Just did. I don't think there's any chance that we're going to get hit unless it's a high pop-up, though. And we can catch that, right? Uh, I might make an attempt. <laughs> Here's a breaking ball. Struck him out looking. And the inning is over. Two strikeouts in the inning for Josh Robinson. And he continues to pitch a beauty as we have completed four innings in this baseball game with the score of Pontotoc 1 and Ridgeland nothing. And we are going to take a break and come back with more Warrior Baseball here for you right after the break. Stay with us. Just suck. Stand by. Top of the fifth inning as the Warriors come to bat leading one to nothing. And the bottom three in the order, Robinson, Holt, and Walker. Robinson struck out his first time up. He swings on the first pitch, slow grounder up along third. And the third baseman cuts in front, makes the play, and throws him out. Five to three on the put out. One pitch, one out here in the fifth. This game moving along pretty quick. We're already in the fifth inning. And just slightly over an hour. Tyler Holt will be the batter. He struck out his first time up. That first time around the order, Williams struck out five of the nine he faced. He has one since then, so he has six strikeouts on the game. Ground ball to second, slowly hit. Second baseman will glove. He'll throw to first for the out, two down. Two pitches, two outs here. And now Kerry Walker will be the batter. Walker scored the only Warrior run after leading uh, with a two, two out double back in the third inning and came around to score on the base hit by Hester. So same scenario as back in the third inning. Two outs with the bases empty for Kerry Walker. Been a pitching duel today, no doubt. Just three hits combined for these two teams. Here's the pitch, ground ball, foul up along third. No balls and a strike here on Walker. I tell you, this is kind of game done. If you get up a couple of runs, you got to feel pretty good the way your, the way your defense is playing, the way your pitching's going. Absolutely. You'd like to get some more insurance, but. Oh, yeah. You'd rather be in that. Warrior dug out up one to nothing as opposed to the other one. Williams cooled off a little boy. He looked like he was going to cruise the whole ball game. He has retired sit straight though, and there's a yep. fly ball right field. Should be playable for Hitchcock. He backs up a few steps and makes the catch, and the inning is over. So another one, two, three inning for Tyler Williams, and we rolling along as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning with your score. Warriors one, Titans nothing, and we'll take a break. You're watching Warrior Baseball here on your local sports connection. We'll return right after this. 
stand by. Welcome back, everyone. Don Brooks, Bill Morgan here in the bottom of the fifth inning as Ridgeland comes to bat, and they pop up the first pitch. Shallow right field, Kerry Walker coming in, and he'll make the catch. One pitch, one out, and these guys are, these two pitchers are just working in a hurry and taking care of business. The Titan batter is the shortstop. Here's Brandon Walls. Walls got the only hit of the game so far for Ridgeland. He had a single back in the second inning, was left stranded on the bases after they tried that double steal that didn't work. And the pitch is low for ball one. Want to know the count on Brandon Walls, the Titan shortstop. I believe, Bill, one of only two teams in the state with the nickname Titans. Ground ball to short, kid will scoop. Plenty of time, he throws in time for the out. Two up, two down for Jason Salters, who hit a soft liner to second his first time up, 0 for 1. Well, this game in sharp contrast done to the third game with, that you and I saw. Uh, this uh, making quick work of it tonight. We saw a lot of hits in that earlier game. Absolutely. Ground ball hit sharply and it gets by Hodge that time into the right field corner. Salter's going to go to second and the throw coming back in not in time. And it's a two out double off the bat of Jason Salters. And it was a tough play down at first for Hodge. And he could not knock it down, and so it'll go as a double off the bat of Salters. And now runner in scoring position for Daniel Nelson. Nelson popped out to first his first time up. 0 for 1 on the day. Second hit of the game for Ridgeland. So each team with a couple of hits now. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And the pitch is high ball one. Base hit could tie it up. Pontiac is relatively shallow in the outfield. And the pitch in there for strike one. One ball and one strike to Nelson. These pitchers are pitching so good, and, and they're not even the top pitchers on the two respective teams. That's what I was saying. They're not even the top pitchers. By record, anyway. That was a slow right. ground at a third. Going to be a tough play by Holt. He gloves, though. Throws, and not in time. Throw back to third will not be in time either, and it's going to be an infield hit for Nelson. And I think, you know, Holt may have been bothered by coming across the top of that mound trying to make the throw, and he Double clutch just a little bit, and Nelson was able to beat it out for an infield single. And so Ridgeland trying to rally here with a runner at first and third, and back to the top of the order here in Derek Holmes. Mm. Third hit now for the Titans. Holmes is 0 for 2. First pitch in the dirt. It gets by the catcher, and this game's going to be tied up. So a wild pitch by Robinson allows the run to score, and the Titans have tied it up at one. As Brandon, or Jason Salters comes in to score, and he also allows Nelson to move to second, and a base hit could give the Titans the lead here. Holmes popped to second and grounded to short. He's 0 for 2, as we mentioned. The 1-0 pitch is low ball two, two balls and no strikes. So a two-out rally by the Titans. Both teams have gotten their runs coming with two away. Very similar to the top bottom of the order did the job. There's a line drive center field. Kidd is right there, though, and he makes the catch. And the inning is over. Holmes hit it on the nose, but right at Jacob Kidd. And so the Warriors get out of it, but the Titans are able to tie it up. One run on two hits, no errors. And after five complete, we got a new ball game. Pontotoc one, Ridgeland one. We'll take a break and be back in just a moment. Play in the cheap seats. Stand by. 
Welcome back, everyone. A tie ball game as we enter the sixth inning, one to one. And the leadoff hitter, J.J. Hester at the plate. And the first pitch, a little cue job off the end of the bat. Glove by Smith, he bobbled it, and he's gonna be an error on Smith. Justin Smith could not come up with the ball, and he bobbled it, and once he did, no chance to get J.J. Hester, so that'll be an E3. And Hester is aboard to lead off the inning, and that brings up Caleb Kidd. Well, Smith had the play, but bobbled the ball done, as you said, Hester on board. What a great turn there for Pontotoc. So Kidd, who is 0 for 1, a strikeout and a walk, will be the batter with nobody out. Now the catcher will go out and give some signals in case Hester tries to steal here or bunt. They'll know what to do. I don't think I don't know if this is a bunting situation or not. We'll see. Kidd may be bunting here. In a 1-1 tie. Ridgeland thinks he may be anyway, and they're taking a long time and now time call by Caleb Kidd. Here's the pitch, he does square around, butts it foul. Got a piece of it and it's 0-1 now the count. First error of the game for either team. Charge to Ridgeland. Ridgeland's out hit, Pontotoc, three to two through first five innings. Kid squares again, now he's gonna swing and miss and a strike two. Well, they had the uh, fake the bunt swing away on as third baseman was close in along the line, but now for the 0-2 count, let's see what Coach Webb does here. The 0-2 pitch struck him out, and they will not have to make the throw to first because Hester is occupying the base, and so there's one out, and Kidd strikes out for the second time tonight, and the batter now will be Tyler Hodge. Hodge is 0-2, he struck out and flied to right. As a ground ball to second, could be two. Flip to second for one, back to first, double play. And the inning is over. Four to six to three on the double play. And that will end the inning as that gets the Ridgeland fans excited as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, one Titan error. And after five and a half, your score is tied. Warriors one, Titans one. And uh, let's take a look now at our fan cam as we'll see some of the Pontotoc fans here below us and enjoying the game with their long chairs and the both down the third baseline by the dugout as well as a lot of them up here in the stands. A lot of students here, as you mentioned earlier, uh, most of the parents have gotten the uh, front row seats down there, front and second row seats, and the students have filled the crowd here up in the grandstand. That's right, the parents getting that close view to watch their sons play play the game, Don, as you see a lot of the high school kids back up this way, so a lot of excitement going on up here with this Pontotoc crowd. Bottom of the sixth inning coming up, and the Titans will have the two, three, four hitters due up in this inning. Edward Joe, Tyler Williams, and Wade Holman will face Josh Robinson. Well, you can feel at ease knowing that the entire staff at Southern Pulmonary Care Services and Pharmacy are all licensed respiratory care therapists and are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, while providing their patients medications for nebulization with a prescription from their physician. They offer complete chest assessments on each visit with a detailed report of the assessment and visit presented to the patient's physicians. Southern Pulmonary Care Service and Pharmacy 316A Coffee Street. Call 1-800-585-585. 3116. Owner Wayne Mahon, Marianne Hester, Donna Jones, and Beverly Wardlaw, all licensed respiratory care practitioners. Proud to be the sponsor of the game here on Cable Channel 13 and TV7. Uh, bottom of the sixth here for Edward Joe. He's grounded out twice, 0 for 2. And he takes the first pitch low and inside ball one. One ball and no strike here on the Titan catcher. 
In the 1-0 pitch, curveball in there for a strike. And the, no, he called it a ball. Mm. Guess it was a little bit high. Two balls and no strikes. And the pitch, that's going to be in there for a strike, and it's two and one. Two one pitch, ground ball too short. Kid with a nice play, throws to first and overshot him. Mm. And there'll be an error on Kid. He gloved the ball nicely as he circled around it, gloved it out to the side, made a nice play, but couldn't make the accurate throw on the run as it was high. And so it will be a error, I believe is how they'll rule it, of course. We haven't put it up on the scoreboard yet, but it should be an error on Kid. And now they're going to have a pinch runner coming in. Wilson will run for Ridgeland. As Tyler Williams comes to the plate. Oh for 2, he flied to center and struck out looking. And the pitch curveball high, ball 1. Well, the scorekeepers has fell asleep in the press box. That, that air right. conditioning up there in that press hey. box. I went up there to get the lineups. You can understand why. <laughs> they may be taking a little break. They ruled it a hit. Yeah, they didn't put the air up, Don. They haven't put the hit up, not either. yet. Right. If that's a hit, that's home cooking. That's all I can say. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know where we are for the game. <laughs> They did give him a hit, apparently. <laughs> Ground ball, right side, base hit. Wilson goes to second, he'll stop there. As the good throw by Walker to hit the cutoff man, and now the Titans have something brewing here in the sixth inning. With a base hit to right off the bat of Taylor, Tyler Williams. Ponotas got together their thoughts here, I believe. As Coach Webb's going to go to the mound to talk to his pitcher. And with that, let's take a break. First and second, no outs for Ridgeland. Bottom of the sixth, another 1 1 tie. Back in a moment. Wade Holman, the batter here, as we bring you back to action. He'll be bunting here. And hit him in the head. He squared around to bunt. And Robinson threw a curveball that plunked him. And now the bases are loaded for Ridgeland here in the bottom of the sixth inning after the second hit batter of the game. And it'll bring up Shelby Robertson. And you know even bigger, you know also Don, more importantly, no outs for Ridgeland. So nobody out as you mentioned and Shelby Robertson the batter, the DH, he is 0 for 1, had a sacrifice bunt and a strikeout. Bases are loaded. The Warriors need a strikeout right here. The infield is in. Cut off the runner at the plate. He swings and misses strike one. So anything on the ground, they'll be coming to the plate. Try to cut off that go-ahead run. Good speed at third in Wilson. He's a pinch runner that came in. Here's the pitch. Curveball, ground ball to third. He's got to go to the home. Here's the throw, and he is out. Great play by Gregory Got him. to hold on to that ball. The throw by Holt was low, and Gregory had to backhand it, and that's not an easy play with that mitt. But Gregory did a good job of holding his foot on the plate, making the grab, and that's one out, and that was a huge out right there on the 5-2. to two. You can score it for the first out of the inning. Base is still loaded now for Blake Hitchcock, who is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a fly to right, and... What in the world is he out arguing now? Mm -hmm. Adam Gore wonders that this guy likes right. to argue. That's right. Maybe he came out, he wasn't arguing. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt here. He was just telling the umpire that he wanted to put in a pinch runner. So pinch runner is in for the Titans. They have runners at first, second, and third with one down for Blake Hitchcock, who is 0 for 2. 
Double play would be your nice right here. But if it's a ground ball, most likely Pontotoc's going to come home with it with the infield in, and then they'll have to try to turn it back to first if possible. Original's got somebody warming down in their bullpen. I'd be willing to bet that's their ace, even though he pitched Saturday. Here's the pitch. Popped it up right side, and Hodge giving chase. Cannot make the play up against the fence. That would have been a tough play. Hodge colliding with the fence there. Not able to make the catch. And strike one to count here to Blake Hitchcock. Yeah, but Justin Smith down there in the bullpen getting loose there, ace pitcher. And they may be not going to take any chances here. They may bring him in. In the top of the seventh, especially if they get the lead. 0-1 oh, to count here. Robinson out of the stretch. And the pitch. And they're going to squeeze, and it is a foul ball. Mm. And had that been fair, oh, yeah, they, I think Gregory could have tagged him out. Right. And so the Titans rolling the dice here, trying to squeeze in a run. And now two strikes to count on Blake Hitchcock. Infield in, bases loaded. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. 1-1 one, one your score. Here's the pitch. Oh, that looked like strike three, and he called it a ball. Wow. That was a look close, Don. Mm. You take an 0-2 count, I think I have to ring you up if it's close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to be swinging 0-2. Right. 1-2 the count to Hitchcock. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, popped it foul out of play. Hitchcock stays alive. Count remains one and two. Robinson has given up four hits through five and two third, or one third, five and a third innings. Walked one, hit two. Needs an out right here. One, two pitch, struck him out. Huge strike out there for Josh Robinson. So they got the strike out anyway. And now with two down, it's up to Brandon Walls. Mm. Walls is one for two. He has a single and a ground out to short. Now the defense can go back to regular depth. Robinson's got to tighten the belt right here, and he does with strike one. Here's the pitch. Check swing, little soft liner to first. They're going to flip it to the pitcher in time in the inning. Wow. Three to one on the put out. And Ponotok gets out of a bases loaded jam in the bottom of the sixth. No damage done. Mm. And the game remains tied after six complete here at Hines Community College. We've got a good one on our hands today. Ponotok one, Ridgeland one. We'll be back with more baseball action right after this. Welcome back everyone here to Hines Community College as we enter the top of the seventh inning and a pitching change for Ridgeland. They brought in the ace pitcher, Justin Smith, who moves from first base to the mound. First pitch, a base hit by Hayes Gregory. A leadoff single for Gregory on the first pitch. And keep in mind that Smith pitched on Saturday, so he's coming back on very short rest. Yeah. But if you're Ridgeland, I think it's a good decision because you, do, you go with your best man here at the crucial time. That's right. Big hit by Gregory right there. Clutch base hit, and he's going to have a pinch runner for him. And Jacob Kidd will be the batter. He may be bunting right here. <laughs> That's the third hit of the game for Pontotoc. 
And Kidd is bunting, and he gets it down, but it's going to be fair. Throw to first in time. And so Jacob Kidd does his job with a sacrifice right in front of the plate. Moves the pinch runner to second. And so there's one out, but a runner in scoring position here for Nathan Hamilton. Well, this one's everything done. We thought it might be living up to the excitement, and this is what it's all about in game three. Absolutely, and biggest of bat of Nate's life right here, I would have to say. 0 for 2 on the day, and he swings and misses at the first pitch. An off-speed pitch out of Smith, and it's no balls and one strike. Oh, and one to count. Justin Smith out of the stretch, the pitch, and a ground ball, third baseline, fair ball! Here comes the runner, he will score! And the Warriors lead it two to one! An RBI single down the third base line out of Nathan Hamilton. And the Warriors lead two to one. An RBI for Hamilton. And the batter will be Josh Robinson, a chance to help himself here. And now a pinch runner will come in for Hamilton. Yeah, you don't want to celebrate too much here. Right. That'll get the other team pumped up. And now the Warriors will make their way back to the dugout. And Josh Robinson, the hitter, he's 0 for 2 on the day. Don, we got to get up a notch here. <laughs> <laughs> so the bar is going to be in our way a little bit, but not too bad. Not too bad. 0 and 2. Uh, you know the fans got to figure they're going to stand up on the rest of this one. Yep. Rightfully so, so. Can't blame them. Oh, no. One out. Runner at first, a pinch runner for Hamilton. And Josh Robinson, who's 0 for 2, stands in. Smith will throw to first. And the pitch. And that is outside for ball. One ball, no strikes to count here on Robinson. Two runs, four hits, and an error for the Warriors. One run, four hits, and an error for the Titans here as we're in the top of the seventh inning. Warriors have taken a two to one lead. Another throw over. Here's the pitch. Little blooper down the right field line. It's going to be foul by about 20 feet. And the count will go one and one now on Robinson. Robinson trying to punch it the other way through that hole, big hole on the right side of the infield. Tyler Williams, by the way, moved to first base. He and Justin Smith just traded positions. Smith came to the mound in the seventh. And Williams moved to first. And we mentioned, you know, they went with their top guy, but you cannot question the job that Williams was doing. He was pitching a beauty. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So here's the pitch, and it is low, ball two. Two balls and a strike here on Robinson. And there's a little flare to the shortstop, should be caught, and it is. And that'll be the second out of the inning, a little pop-up to the shortstop. And Robinson is retired, and it brings up Tyler Holt. Holt is 0 for 2, he struck out and grounded to second. Here's the pitch. 
Ground ball foul into the Ridgeland dugout. No balls and a strike. That pitch is outside for ball one. One ball, one strike. Well, if Pontotoc goes on to win this game, you know the original coach going to be drawing some criticism for taking out Tyler Williams. And the pitch swung on and missed for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Titan fans now have gathered down the first baseline to try to get their team going. Everybody's on their feet in this one. One, two pitch. Little bloop in the left center field. That could be trouble. Holmes on the run is going to get there, though. In fact, he almost overran it. And Holmes, with good speed to close in and make the catch in left center to retire the side in the seventh. But the Warriors get one run on two hits. A big RBI single out of Nathan Hamilton. And we head to the bottom of the seventh inning with the score. Pontotoc two, Ridgeland one. And the Titans are going to have Salters. Nelson and Holmes, your three hitters coming up in this bottom of the seventh inning. What a ball game we've got here today for you. One run in the third for Pontotoc, one in the seventh. Titans got their lone run back in the fifth, and we're two to one. Pontotoc on top, and Nathan Hamilton got the big hit, and now Josh Robinson will try to close the door on the Titans and move Pontotoc to the state title series against either West Jones or Brookhaven. Well, you know, Everett had done, Everett had to be awfully special to get to that state title series. But right now, they want to concentrate on closing this one out. So uh, what, a, what a great trip down here, especially if they can close it out and get the victory here and move on. And you and I could make plans for the next series coming up, which would be really exciting. Game one, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it'll be at the south because of the higher numbered region. And then game two will be back in Pontotoc, and game three, if necessary, would be on a neutral field at Smith Wheels Stadium the following weekend. So that's the schedule as of right now, I believe. But first, you still got to get three more outs, not oh, yeah. over by any means. Ridgeland has been a comeback team of several times in this playoff series. They won some close games against Oxford in the second round, and now they'll have Jason Salters leading it off, and Salters is one for two with a double on the night and scored the only run for Ridgeland. And they're going to move Walker over toward the line a little more in the right field. And the first pitch is in there for ball one. It's a little bit low, I guess. One ball and no strikes to count. Hodge is guarding the line at first. And that pitch low and away, ball two. I think Salters will take one here. Two and oh, and you need a base runner. And the pitch. That's a strike, two and one. The count on Jason Salters. Eight, nine, and one hitters for the Titans here in the bottom of the seventh. They have to have at least one to keep it alive. The two-one pitch outside ball three. Robinson behind in the count three and one. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Full count now on Salters. He's got to be swinging here if it's close. Payoff pitch. Popped it foul, and that's going to go over on top of the concession stand. Oh, what was that? <laughs> well, bounced right off a white car out there, but it wasn't mine. I learned a long time ago when I started right. doing this, you don't park right there. <laughs> and we can catch a ball in an equipment bag. We learned that, that has too, happened Doug. before. Only once. A ball landed in our <laughs> equipment bag one night over at Vardaman. That's right. Right between us, in fact. You cleared out, and I did too. That's right. 3 2 pitch, fly ball left field, right at Hester. He's got it. One down. 
And that's a big out right there. The first out of the inning, always a huge one. And now here comes Daniel Nelson. Well, how fast do you think the Warriors would like to get two more outs and close this one out here tonight? Nelson is one for two. Pop to first and single. Robinson starts him off with a strike. The pitch. High for ball one. One ball and one strike. Pontotoc has made the playoffs in all four major sports this season. Been a great year for Pontotoc Athletics. They're hoping to extend it a little longer. There's a curveball, and this is going to be strike two. One, two, the count on Daniel Nelson. Here it comes. High ball two as Robinson overthrew that one a little bit. Two balls, two strikes the count. The 2-2 pitch, grounded foul. They stay alive. Well, you know, you can call this series done the Road Warriors because the road team has won uh, the previous two ball games. That's right. Looks like that could hold true right here. Two balls, two strikes on Nelson. Each team with four hits, but the big numbers, two runs for Pontotoc and only one for Ridgeland. The 2-2 two -two offering. Foul back again, and Nelson's hanging tough. I tell you what, give Robinson credit. He has pitched a good ball game here tonight. Uh, number 14 coming in, and Josh is... Uh, has accepted the challenge, and uh, during the big pressure pitches, he's come, he's come through pretty much. He's been pretty consistent. We'll be selecting our player of the game at the conclusion of this one. And that pitch is high ball three. So the second straight 3-2 count now for Josh Robinson. And if Pontotoc wins, I'm going to make a prediction that the MVP will have blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you're going out on a limb. Full count pitch to Nelson, and a ground ball foul again. Mm. Well, he's hanging in there. He is doing everything he can just to get the bat on the ball, and you got to give Nelson a lot of credit for fighting off some tough pitches out of Josh Robinson. Here's the payoff pitch again, line drive, base hit to left. And so Nelson comes through. With a base hit, and the tie and runs it first. Second hit of the day now for Nelson. The fifth hit off of Josh Robinson. And now Derek Holmes will be the batter. Holmes is 0 for 3 on the day. Popped to second, grounded to short, and fly to center. Give Nelson credit. He hung around long enough, able to get the base hit, and uh, at least give a little life into this Ridgeland club that, that's on the verge of being their season being over. You know, if you're the pitcher, if you're out, you, this has to seem like an eternity. <laughs> One out, runner at first for Derek Holmes. Holt in on the grass, thinking Holmes may try to drop a bun here and beat it out. He has good speed as we've seen him in the outfield run down some balls. And the pitch inside for ball one. <laughs> one and oh, Derek Holmes, Edward Joe would be next. The pitch. Gonna be high ball two, two and oh. Curve ball hung a little bit high. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Popped it up, high fly ball in the right center field. Walker coming in, has got a beat on it. Makes the catch, and then throws back to first, but not in time. But they're two away now in the bottom of the seventh. And the Warriors are one out away from advancing to the state championship round. 
Edward Joe is the batter. He is 0 for 3 on the day. Grounded out twice, reached on an error. But Don, these fans are ready to come unglued over here. Joe ready to pitch upstairs for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch. It's a strike in there with a fastball, one and one. Well, Ponatok has been a just a phenomenal season. They came in, started the year unranked, but went 12 and 0 in the region. Won 30 games. There's a fly ball left field. Should do it. Hester is there, and the Warriors are going to the state championship. And the crowd goes crazy. Pontotoc has defeated Ridgeland by the final score of two to one. And the Warriors will move on where they are two wins away from a state title in baseball here in the 2004 campaign. What a victory today for these Pontotoc Warriors. And they did it against the top pitcher for Ridgeland in the seventh inning and picked up a run to win it by the final score of two to one. As the Warriors get the win, two runs on four hits, one error. Ridgeland, one run on five hits and one error. Your winning pitcher, Josh Robinson, and the loser is Justin Smith. So our year's not over yet. We've That's got right. more baseball for you from Pontotoc over the next week, week and a half. And let us tell you, our co-players of the game for tonight, Nathan Hamilton with the big RBI single to give the Warriors the lead, and Josh Robinson, who pitched a beauty of a ball game as the Warriors win a tight one, two to one. I tell you, Robinson did what he had to do, and Don Pontotoc had just enough in a defensive battle and a pitching duel, as you called it to come out with a one-run uh, victory here. Congratulations to the team for moving on. And how many times has it been? Nearly middle of May, we're still in sports. Absolutely, <laughs> not too many times. Not many. But should be an exciting week of baseball. And Adam Gore better get his gas tank full. He's going to be doing <laughs> some traveling next week. And uh, we may be headed out as well for a couple of those games anyway as Pontotoc advances to the state title game. We're going to take a break and hear from some of our sponsors. And when we come back, we'll have some post game here from Hines Community College. And we'll try to catch up with Coach Webb as well as our players of the game right after this. Stay with us. Let me see you at five.
Coach Webb, this has to be one of the turnaround stories of the year after a, a, a rough season last year. You know, 31 and 4 in the year, and uh, a chance to play for a state championship has to feel pretty good. I know you're proud for all these guys. I'm extremely proud. Number 32. I'm sorry. It's okay. That's all right. Don't go full time. We had. It's, uh, I'm, it's probably like me. These guys came in. I came in here. A new system, new coach. They bought into it. Done everything we asked them to do, and uh, these guys go to war for us. And we believe that. Well, you still got two more to go. I That's know. Right. Either That's just right. West Jones or Brooke Haven coming up third. Right. Big series there. Looking forward to it. Coach, we appreciate you joining us. Congratulations once again, Thank and uh, good luck to you guys. Next time. Yeah, thanks. All right. That's going to do it here for Pines Community College. A huge win for the Powertown Warriors as they go to 32 and 4 on the season. And uh, knocking off the original here today with a final score 2 to 1. We're going to thank Coach Webb for joining us in the post game show, as well as Nathan Hamilton and Josh Robinson, our co players in the game. Nathan with the big hit. And RBI single in the seventh. And a great pitch game by Josh Robinson. Well, Pontotoc will advance on now, where they'll be on the road Thursday to take on the winner of West Jones and Brooke Haven in that first game. And it's game two of the series back at Pontotoc on Saturday afternoon. That's going to do it for Pines Community College. We want to thank you for joining us here for Pontotoc Warrior Baseball. For Bill Morgan, I'm Don Brooks, and so long. We'll see you next time. Everybody.